shocked. He was he was proud. He said, get up onto the horse. Let's go together. So they gallop towards Karbala. And when they reach there, everyone becomes happy, especially Imam Hussein. His childhood friend is there. The news spreads like wildfire. Everyone hears Habib has come. When Zainab hears this, <laughs> when Zainab hears this, she says, send my salam to Hussein. Um, to send my salam to Habib. Because she knew that people were deserting Hussein, that the, the strength was low, that moral, moral was low amongst the group. They were thinking, you know, who's coming to help us? Why aren't people waking up from this darkness? What's wrong with people? So she says, send my salams to Habib. When Habib hears this, <laughs> he takes off his turban and drops to the floor. He picks up the dirt, the dirt, the earth, and he puts it on his head. Oh, Habib, who are you that the daughter of Ali is sending salam to you? <laughs> who are you? Be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> they say that Hazrat Zainab salam alayha, she, she smiled very few times. And we can't really call it a smile. It was more a, a smile of relief rather than a smile of happiness. A smile of comfort. They say that this man was one of the people that managed to make her smile on several occasions and put her at rest. Now, the night before Ashura, everyone's in the tents and there was hundreds of followers, if not just over a thousand maybe. The Haditha, you know, they differ. And Imam Hussein knows that some of these people, they're not here for the real reasons. And yet they're ashamed to leave him. They don't want to be looked at as a traitor or something. So he calls everyone and he says, turn off the lights. He tells them, look, as an imam, I have lifted my, um, my, uh, what word can I use? I've lifted my uh, rule upon you. Um, you know, if you've done your bayat towards me, you're free to go. I know that you have debts to pay. I know you have families at home. Don't stay here. Go. Go. And as we know that maybe out of, say, for instance, 200 tents, there was then just left with, say, 50 or 40. The numbers decreased rapidly. Zainab, upon seeing this, she became heartbroken. That night she kept opening the curtain and looking to see, is anyone else leaving us? <laughs> is anyone else going away and deserting Hussein? And Habib, he was such a man, such a brave man that Imam Hussein placed Abbas on the right and Habib on the left to guard the tents. He knew that the women seeing Habib would feel comfortable. But Zainab keeps opening the curtain and closing the curtain. Opening the curtain and closing the curtain. Habib see this, sees this and says, what can I do to make her calm? This isn't right. So he stands there and he says, Abbas! Are you here? Abbas shouts, Habib, I'm here! Ali Akbar, are you here? Ali Akbar shouts, oh, Habib, I'm here! He shouts to all of them one by one, Muhammad, oh! And they reply, <laughs> Zainab upon hearing these voices, <laughs> she closes the curtain, and she has a smile on her face. <laughs> this was Habib. They say he was an old man, yet look at him, learn from him. <laughs> oh, Habib. We weren't there like you to be able to serve our master. But there are many hadith that say that those who heard the call of Imam Hussein, they should have answered otherwise. Hasar al dunya Hussein, I wasn't there but I'm here today. 
And with this love that I have for you, wanting to die for you, Hossein, I'm going to call out to you. And anyone else who wants to die for Hossein should call out with me five times with that baker, ya Hossein. La 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 baker, ya Hossein. Salamu alaykum ya Abba Abdullah. Before we finish, I would just like to say something very short and address you all. First, I'd like to thank the owner of the house, Dr. Ali, for giving me the opportunity to speak and you all for listening to what I have to say. Second, I'd like to thank everyone who took part in this match list. From the people who did the shopping, to the people who were in the kitchen, to the people who served the tea and served the breakfast and clean up afterwards, to the people who cry tears and show expression of love for Hussein. Although I'm no one to thank you, Hussein should be the one that's thanking you, and I'm sure he is. But I thank you on behalf of Hussein. And no doubt that our sawab is no different. From the person giving the speech to the person pouring the tea, everyone has the same. If I've said anything to offend anyone, or I've wasted your time, then please forgive me, because that certainly was not my aim at all. At all. So I ask for forgiveness. And just as I have a, a wish of a hope that, inshallah, we in the future will show our love for Hussein year in and year out, not just year in and year out, every day, every day, the enemy is is up in their game to rid, rid us of everything. Of everything. <clears throat> and I'll give a speech, inshallah, in the future about that more clearly. They strip us of our azadari. They say, don't cry for Hussein. I have people question me at university. She, our youth, question me. Why do we cry for Hussein? It happened 1,400 years ago. I'll address that in another speech, inshallah. But first, just I'd like to thank you all and for this love that we have for Imam Hussein, give the loudest salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Allah. Allah.